Hey everyone, this is Dan, and welcome to the Admi Gamers channel. As always, click on the section you're interested in if you'd like to jump to it straight away. But if you're sort of new to the game, I would recommend you watch the whole video. Once you start your game, you're gonna end up with this screen in front of you. Uh, of course, hmm. to move your mercenaries, hmm. you can shade them yes. all or select hmm. the individual mercenary, okay. right click where you want them to move. Orders. You know, this is in regards Copy just to that. make them to move. Now, the cool thing is, what you can also do is maybe tell them to move to a location. Uh, you right click and you hold the right click down, and then you can actually move in which uh, direction you'd like him to look at. So, for Copy example, that. if you're uh, playing and you're moving forward and you're, you're moving, let's say, towards this way, up here, you'd want the mercenary to obviously look there. So. You see the the cone of sight changes, so I want him to go there, and I want him to look there. Copy that. You know, so you can do that as well. Uh, hitting the space bar obviously gives you the the pause or the, the in-game pause mode or the the sort of semi TBS. So, so what you can obviously do is you can assign many different steps. As you can see on the right side, I have different stances. So, for example, I'd want him to move here, so I'd right click and stare, look right click and hold it there Fine. then I'd want him to crouch okay so she'll go there she'll stare she'll look forward and then she'll crouch you know then I can make her I pair space bar again I make her stand up I make her let's say go here and then look there Got it. and then crouch again and then I can have let's say what a steroid also back her up and he can come like here and look there I'm on it and then crouch so like that, you can sort of arrange your mercenaries in the sort of uh, paused mode here as you wish and make them move around and uh, put them into like positions and stuff in the actual pause mode. It's very useful because you can actually assign a different, uh, different stances and uh, positioning. Of course, the one thing that the that this doesn't support is the fact that if you change weapons. So, for example, if I tell steroid to let's say stand up, hold on a second. If you tell him to stand up and move here and then look, I don't know, down, okay, I hear you. and then I'll tell him to, to switch the weapon or put the grenade and then throw the grenade. I you know, throw the grenade. You know, see here's the grenade, and then I'll tell him to switch the grenade to a smoke grenade. I don't think I have a smoke grenade. I might have a gas grenade. Yeah. And then I'll tell, hold on, here we go, steroid, to switch the grenade to a smoke grenade, and then throw the, I'm throw the smoke grenade as well. He, he won't be able to, to switch the grenades. Same thing with the weapons, you can't tell him to fire and then switch the weapon. You can't put that into the actual uh, paused timeline. You know, it won't work. What he's going to do is, you're going to see now, he's just going to throw the smoke grenade, gas grenade that he has. That's it. You know, so he won't actually throw the... The frag grenade first, and then the smoke grenade first. Now, also in regards to if you'd like to heal, obviously, you need to have the actual item equipped already. If you have the item equipped already, you can directly right-click on your mercenary. Since, uh, obviously, he has no damage, I can't right-click on him. But if I move over somebody who has damage, like steroid, you know, I should be able to Roger that. directly right-click on him. Hold on, let's, let's see... should be able to directly right click on him, maybe okay. if he's damaged. So now if you move over him, yeah, you see? Got it. it means there has to be a certain amount of damage. And once once he has a certain amount of damage, if you have the item equipped already, this can also be counted with the toolkits and repairing items as well. You know, if you have the item equipped already, you can directly right click on your mercenary or another mercenary to repair or heal the actual action itself. Another cool thing Got to it. know is that you have a guard mode. So, for example, if I'm moving huh? forward Whatever. and I have mercenaries placed all around the place, and I'm focusing, What's let's next? say, with these two in this section, Roger. okay, and I can't be, and I can't yeah. be like uh, I on this that. area huh? all the time. Got it. Got so, what I'll do is yes. I'll put these guys in guard mode. What means is yes. they'll automatically shoot at any enemy they Got see. It. Now, the disadvantage of this mm -hmm. is is that yes, it's cool that you don't have to always aim and shoot, but the guard mode, putting them in guard mode, makes them shoot every 1.5 seconds or something like that it's a very high interval so if you want to shoot the most efficient way is the best thing to do when you spot an enemy you push spacebar and then you actually go to the mercenaries 
you know and then you see where where they're looking at and you you take care of it now ready for action once you put them on guard mode as mentioned before they will take 1.5 seconds yes. so for example i can also use yeah. it in regards to Better moving forward so effort. i can make md Understood. and meltdown in guard mode and move forward ready for action. you know so automatically they will shoot once they spot hmm. somebody once they spot I somebody they will yes. shoot i hear you now if you make them move they won't shoot while they're moving they're going to actually go to the destination and once they hit the destination then they'll start shooting uh, in this game you can't shoot while running uh, why i'm not really sure why but maybe in the future patches they might make it possible so that's also a good thing to know of course it depends on what weapon you have you can also either switch it from single fire to burst fire I would recommend it in the beginning to keep it on single fire since you don't have a lot of ammo and you want to save your ammunition. Uh, but uh, if you're later on in the game and you have a lot of ammo in your inventory and you sort of wouldn't mind using it, you can always switch to burst fire. Burst fire obviously shoots uh, more bullets from one shot. Like you can check exactly how much, uh, how much, how many bullets it fires by actually going on the item itself, and you can see at the bottom here. It says burst fire times five. It means every time she shoots, she'll shoot out five bullets. You know, each gun has different burst fire modes. For example, this one, if you see burst mode three, it means when I put it on burst mode and she fires or steroid fires since he has the gun, he will shoot three three shots per per actual firing. For each firing, he'll shoot out three bullets. Now there is a disadvantage with the burst fire, is that obviously it's less accurate. Uh, substantially if you use the single fire it's more accurate so the cool thing is to do is when you have an enemy far away there's no real point in putting on burst fire better to keep it on single fire you know and you'll notice that if you st stick it on single fire and let's you aim your target for example he's here and you move on top of him it'll say probability to hit I don't know good or poor but if you switch it from burst to single then it'll say it to good or very good to single fire you know later on it depends I don't know later on in the game itself with the rifles I prefer to go rifle heavy uh, the majority of uh, the enemies that I get uh, are still well that was in the previous patch I don't know how it'll be in this one since I haven't reached later on in the level yet but in the previous one I would just keep them on burst fire once I get uh, the best rifles that I, that I have you know but again obviously if he's much much further away it's recommended they use single mode because single mode will actually be able to get your target of course keep in mind that each weapon has or prefers to be shot in a stance as you see you have the stances here this is ready stance let's take a look at the stances this is ready stance this is run stance and this is crouching stance and then this is prone stance now each of these stances affects on how you shoot the gun uh, the gun itself will be shot differently it means it might take more time to shoot a weapon it might take less time to shoot a weapon depending on your stance for example a sniper rifle I don't have a sniper rifle yet a sniper rifle shoots the best when you're in the prone stance it means you have less time penalty quicker time to aim and more chance to hit when you're in the prone stance a shotgun I believe is best when it's used in the crouching or in the just I think the shotgun is in the crouching stance uh, the majority of the time I hear ya. from waist Whatever. the shotgun is best used the, the quickest uh, time to aim and fire you know the the greatest thing if you'd like to check out what gun or sure which orders, gun will you? shoot in fine, which stance fine, the I'm best moving. or the fastest way is you can check out uh, a great actual uh, compilation of all these statistics that uh, Pecanal dad made. I, I'm sure I I pronounced his uh, nickname wrong, but I think it's Pecanilly dad or something like that. He made a great document, and I have it on my uh, guide as well. I asked him, and I put it there as well. It. It's a, it's a great guide. It tells you uh, how the gun shoots and how much time it takes to shoot the gun in the different stances. So keep in mind, don't like grab any gun you want and and, yep. and go to any stance you want. You know, preferably check out on the document file when using that gun which is the best stance to use when you're shooting that gun for the least amount of time it takes to aim that's like what i mainly look at you know i don't want to spend two seconds shooting a weapon because if he'll take one one and a half seconds to shoot at me obviously he's going to be getting me much quicker because i can't i won't even be able to get off one shot since he'll be hitting me every time so that that's like a good thing to keep in mind in general 
So that sort of covers uh, the side menus here. Of course, you got the stop button, so in case you want to stop everything, for example, if they're running, and then it says, got you know, it. and then you spot an enemy, you're like, oh shit, so you just click the stop and they stop moving where they are. And then you have the equipment. You can obviously trade between Ready your mercenaries action. or a T. T is the Better shortcut on the, the keyboard. Effort. T is the shortcut on the keyboard. You can trade like this. But when the sector is yours, you don't really need the trading anymore since the new patch allowed you to drag and drop items uh, between each mercenary. For you to get an idea about the new patch, you can just watch the video I made on the new patch. So that sort of uh, will take care of that. And. Uh, in regards to the hotkeys again, T is for trading, I don't really use that much since I go into the actual, uh, I just push tab, tab gives you this actual uh, mercenary uh, inventory or mercenary view, and here you can trade all the items you want. Another uh, neat, obviously, hotkey is Q. When you push, you see your mercenaries are numbered 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, you can obviously yeah. select what? them by pushing the numbers, so that I'm doing now. Uh, but also a neat shortcut is Q. Ready Q will action. select all your mercenaries, so I use that quite Better often. It's just in case you guys feel like uh, selecting all of them. You know, sometimes you don't know and you have to go and find every single mercenary to select them all. And since you can't... Sorry about my voice, hold on. <coughs> and since you can't actually uh, control, you know, like put them into groups, control one or two or three, so you have to hunt them down, so Q sort of selects them yeah. all, so that's very yeah. useful, as you can see. If I yeah. select four and then I push mm. Q, yeah. so that's very useful to get all the mercenaries going. Also, what the next? good thing to keep in mind is obviously a mercenary can only hold us a certain fine, amount of weight, fine, depending I'm on his moving. strength. So, for example, you'll have, I don't know, let's say Ira here. Her strength is, uh, what's strength? 43. And uh, as you can see, Ira is already overweight. Uh, there's this sort of uh, icon here. It says, carry weight exceeded. The total weight of all the items carries is too much for this Merc to handle. Drop the items from the inventory so the Merc can move. You won't notice the effect if the sector is yours because it doesn't affect the energy. But if the sector isn't yours and you uh -huh. move when you're overweight, Ready. the moment I move her, just Stop leave it a little bit, the energy drops to zero. And then she'll just be crawling all over the place. I'll just on make it. it on on crouch actually Fine. she moves even slower than this she's just Understood. overweight okay. so make so. keep an eye out on uh, the actual mercenaries and make sure they're not overweight so when yes. you're actually in an enemy sector you won't uh, be penalized and and the whole energy won't vanish then it means you're gonna have to rest up while you're in an enemy sector to get your energy all the way up and that's time that you don't want to waste because when you're in an enemy sector every second you waste on doing other things or trying to regroup or, or heal is sort of a risk because you never know when they'll come from especially since you're playing the game with fog of war if you're playing the game with fog of war because then you don't know where they are so that's sort of key also in the game you'll notice uh, fine, that fine, uh, you should I'm keep moving. an eye out on all these yellow uh, notifications it's uh, mm. as shown in my patch uh, here are a few uh, screenshots you see this yellow sort of uh, target these uh, will actually show you where the sound is coming from I would highly recommend you keep an eye out for this. And the same thing applies for when you have the the sound shows up on the actual map where you're playing and also on the mini-map on the left side on the bottom. If you're playing with Fog of War, keep a very close eye on this because you'll never know where they come from. And you might get surprised and they'll jump up from behind you. So it's a very good idea to make sure that you have everything covered from, from actually taking care of where the sound is coming from and who it is. In this case, I, yes. I equipped steroid with the actual uh, extended ear. You know, it enhances the hearing from from grandpa to the bat. You know, it's it's quite a neat little item. I know I could have obviously equipped him with with a, a proper helmet. You know, that I gave the rest of them. You know, but uh, I prefer to have this extended ear, especially with one of my mercs, with one of my tank or backup tank mercs. I keep uh, extended ear there. So like that, I can actually have a chance of hearing sounds more, uh, more around where or more around where I am. So for example, normally maybe I'd hear somebody from here, but with my extended ear, I know or I can hear them already from here coming towards me. So that 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 is a big deal, especially tactically and strategically, when you're playing fog of war and especially hard. In my case, it's it's a really big deal if you have this uh, heads up. Now in regards to movements, when yes. you run around the map, Roger. especially if the map isn't yours, your actual energy will go down. Now, the more you run around the map, the, the lower the energy will become. You know, obviously after a certain period of time it goes up, 
Now if you run around the map on the world map here, your energy will actually go down and, and have like a... They'll get tired and the energy won't charge up to 100. They will no longer have the max amount of energy. I'll give you an example here. I'll run around here. So, as you can see, also keep an eye on the speed. So now, if, if they're on the road, you'll notice the speed is high. Now, you have a choice between going on uh, to take a direct path. It means they'll go directly the way I choose. Or you have a choice between choosing the fastest way to travel. It means by road. Now you can see the speed they're going at is here, it says 6.30 kilometers per hour. So as you can see the, the, the speed is substantially faster since I, if you decide to take the, the fastest route obviously it automatically picks the road. You know, if you want to go here it, it automatically takes the road and then it goes off the road. So let's speed it up a little bit more just to get them tired. You know I just want to show you guys what happens is, is as you can see here. It also Watch shows you the image the of. Now, if you move them around a lot, uh, after a certain period of time, when they're off the road, they're moving at around 6.3. Hold on, let's, let's slow it down a bit now. Uh, the speed will actually start to slow down. As you notice, it's no more 6 kilometers, 6 uh, point whatever it was kilometers per hour. It's much slower because they're getting tired. As you see, the energy bar is much lower on all of them. And you also get a sign here, the travel speed reduced due to exhaustion. It means they're exhausted. Now, uh, to prevent this, or to actually uh, increase this, you can either stop moving, wherever they are. It means, for example, here. You can stop it. And then you just let the time pass. As time passes, uh, the actual base energy... The, the actual base energy will go up, you know? So you can do it this way. The base energy will go up if you stay in your place and you let the time pass. Obviously, if you put it very fast, the actual base energy will increase. You can call this a sort of sleeping slash resting. Now, we'll, we'll continue with the energy once we get back into the map. But since we're here, I'll just show you what else you can do. Obviously, when you have the town, you can hire the militia. And you can increase their levels to get a better idea. You can just watch the patch 1.13. I cover it there. And when a militia is coming, you can actually click on them and see uh, what type of level they are in. So you have a better idea. So let's let a day pass. And once I let a day pass, one of the militia members will come towards me. And you can actually click on the militia and see what level they're at. So you have an idea if you can take them out or if you want to let the actual city take it out. So I'll be back in a sec. So... Here, finally, an enemy squad is coming. So what you can actually do is you can left-click the squad, and you can see what type of enemies there are in the squad. So I know there's three level 1 guys, and then there's three level 2 guys. Now, in my town, I have four level 1, one level 2, one level 3, and one level 5. So technically, my level 5 guy is going to kick their ass alone. Well, probably not alone, but he should be able to take care of the level 2 guys. So overall, I overpowered... I know I overpowered this team. So there's no need to come and back it up since I can actually increase, uh, train them and increase their levels. Now, what happens when you train them is you don't make them or you don't improve their equipment and stuff. The equipment is the equipment you give them. The only thing that you do is when you train them here by paying and training them is you increase their skills and attributes. You know, when you level up, you put more skills and more attributes into the sections that you want. Well, the same thing happens here. Obviously, it's by default. It adds it in accordance to however they programmed it. So, for example, I have a guy with, let's say, I don't know, 70 marksmanship. This is just an example. If I level him up, you know, to level 2, he might have 75. To level 3, he might have, I don't know, 80. You know, level 5 guy might have very high stats. You know what I mean? Obviously, you can level up to level 10, and they can only level up to level 5. You know, but again, their level 5 as being militia might be in comparison to you being in a level 10. You know, because later on you have a level 5 militia going up against you and it's sort of the equivalent you being a level 10 and they being a level 5. So this is just to get a perspective idea in, in how to compare uh, their actual leveling up in accordance to yours. Now, in regards to the energy itself, we said the energy, it gets drained if you move around too much. So let's move around again a lot. A and he should win, attack. technically speaking. As mentioned before, he should win. What we're going to do is watch them win. Since we calculated that I have a substantially higher chance of my level guy. I only lost a few. I have three. So that's it. I won. And now you can see they're tired. So what we're going to do is we're going to stop. We're going to go back in. Is 
the key thing to forget is when you run around as i said your base energy goes down now to increase it is you can sleep on the world map as i said and let the time pass which is again very risky because you're spending time or you can eat consumables in this area i don't have consumables so what i'm going to do is i'm going to jump to the actual university where i have a lot of consumables and they're going to move even longer as you can see they're already turtled they're exhausted they need a rest and in the actual university i should have plenty of consumables in my sector inventory uh now as you can see the ham and the beef is excellent the only issue is is when you start using consumables well uh, the most efficient way is to actually pick the lightest with the most effect so for example <clears throat> let's just increase it as it is over here i already have canned asparagus beef is excellent it immediately increases everything uh, what i realized as well is fruits are are very good as well fruits or vegetables i don't think i have any here but i remember i stockpiled yeah pineapples 1.6 kilos that's pretty heavy just for a pineapple that's a lot of weight to carry around and you have potatoes where are my potatoes i know i have a bunch of them here there 750 grams you know but again look how much energy they'll increase when i eat it that's a lot of energy to increase again not all consumables are good yeah some are spoiled for example rum will decrease any alcoholic uh, beverage you drink should decrease you see it goes slightly down you know tequila it goes even more down obviously the more drunker you get him the, the, the less he's gonna want to move around so here I'm gonna eat beef beef is I think one of the best because it's 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 huge it's a huge amount of energy it should shoot him up he's completely healed up yeah keep an eye out some of them are spoiled you know for example if the actual uh, item itself says like uh, you can't read the label because it's so old don't don't drink it don't eat it don't 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 do anything with it because again it'll go down you know if you're gonna eat rotten or spoiled food you know for example looks like it's been saved for a special occasion that never came along for example this is spoiled ham watch what happens when you spill eat spoiled ham you know holy shit it went completely down yeah now what happens when you eat proper ham it goes back up yeah so keep an eye out on what you eat okay uh, as I said you know you can be very efficient in what type of consumables you drag along and depending to the weight weight in accordance to how much energy they charge up so would be a great thing is if we can actually make a table in regards to what consumable increases how much energy in accordance to its weight and make a ratio that'd be very cool that'd be really nice to know like that you can see the most efficient uh, consumable to, to take along with you so this should help you guys in uh, regards to movements and in regards to all the energy and everything in that sense before we finish you know why not give everybody else a good charge up you know so here we go what do we got we got blood sausage blood sausage and we got cola oh actually cola decreased it it might have been spoiled never mind what do we have here better than the crap from the tap water well this should be good yeah nicely healed up energy went up who do we have the hunk of power bars one two what is this it's been lying in the sun so this is spoiled we don't want to eat that Ham, let's give her ham. And you have Raider. We'll give him ham. Beef, we we'll give to Meltdown. Give him beef. Wolf, wolf is fine. So, this is it. They're all filled up nicely. Now, in regards to what weapons you should use and what weapons you should you pick when you shoot? find them. Well, in the beginning, you're going to start off with handguns. Now, the handguns themselves, they're uh, not such uh, a bad thing, especially in the beginning, okay. since you Did don't you have anything so? else so uh Fine. the handguns you should probably majority of wise each gun will have obviously a range as you can see in this one the submachine gun it has a range of uh, 17 meters and damage of 25. now if we go to our sector inventory you have here are a few different handguns now for example when you start off i sincerely doubt you start off with the desert eagle okay let's just uh, 38 western smithen so you have the 38 you'll start off with this range is 14 damage is 22. Now, you bump into another gun and you'll have range 13, damage 49. Now, I don't know, uh, there is probably a... There's going to be a great deal of speculation, obviously, on which is the best gun. I know you're right, I know you're wrong, you can't do this, you can't do that. But again, this is just my opinion and this is how I play it. So, you don't have to just take my advice, you can do it your own way. But this is uh, the way I choose my guns and the way I would recommend you people choose your guns. In the beginning, it's key to have... A range advantage even if the damage is lower being able to hit the enemy at a distance always gives you a great advantage okay you might not be able to kill him with one shot 
but every time you hit the enemy he has to restart the whole animation of actually aiming taking time to aim and then firing if if he's just about to fire and you hit him it'll take him another one one and a half seconds to get the whole thing going again so if you can disrupt him you obviously can get away more shots and if you have more mercenaries even if one shot hits him it's disrupted and your other three mercenaries can most probably hit him again and disrupt them again and take him out so now for example you'd start off with the 38 so you'd get 14 range 14 damage 22 and now for example if I'd have another drop and the drop I'd get damage 13 no sorry range 13 damage 49 so what I'd probably do is I'd still keep my main tank with the range 14 since the range is much much further away and I might give the desert eagle to the other mercenary I have for example let's say I have I don't know two mercenaries when I start off with so I'd give this to my other mercenary of course if I had two of the 38s then I would give my other mercenary the 38 as well again range over in my case will take priority now if we get another gun here you have range 15 damage 50 so obviously immediately I'll take this gun range 15 damage 50 it means I'll replace my actual 38 with the Barracuda and if I get another one of these I'll replace it with my other mercenary as well now if you get and again a different gun for example you'd get the clock 18 now and then you'd have the Beretta now for example I'd find the clock 18 remember lastly I said I'd replace it with the Barracuda so the Barracuda was range 15 damage 50 now here I'd have range 15 damage 21 so obviously the range is the same and the damage is less so there's no way I'm gonna be using the Glock 18 okay I'd be using the Barracuda now if I'd move down to the Baron and 92F the range is 23 damage is 23 the range is obviously substantially greater the damage is much less okay the damage here is 50 but the damage here is 23 but the range is nearly 50% more so immediately I'll take the Beretta now keep in mind it doesn't only matter on uh, the type of gun you're using because the type of gun you're using obviously shoots different caliber so in this case you know uh, yes I might be using the Beretta the Beretta yes it uses a 9 millimeter and yes the 9 millimeter in general doesn't really have much of a piercing chance hold on I think uh, here it is the 9 millimeter you know it's it's it is a st it's a very let's say weak uh, caliber to shoot and if you're a mercenary or if your militant has armor you probably won't do a lot of damage but you know that again in the beginning it doesn't really matter because the 9 millimeter will still do substantial amount of damage because they don't really have armor yet and, and, and helmets and Kevlar and stuff like this so it's okay so I'd still take the bar the Beretta in this case I still take the Beretta because the range is greater now again if I get another Beretta I'd equip then so hold on, hold on pause initially I said Ira would have the Barracuda once I'd find the Beretta I'd give then Ira the Beretta and for example my other mercenary would have the Western Smith as we said in the beginning the where is it I threw it back in the actual here the 38 my other mercenary would have the 38 obviously since Ira would take the 9 millimeter I'd give the Barracuda to MD MD would now now have the Barracuda in case I'd bump into another Beretta 92 I'd give MD the obviously the Beretta now it gets more interesting when you actually start getting uh, rifles and other guns themselves so for example now I have let's say much later on in the game where I am currently now is I have rifles and different guns to use so for example in this case I have the G41 the range is 38 and the damage is 30 okay Raider he has range 37 damage 28 So, in a sense, uh, the Enfield, it, it's sort of less damage. It is damage 37, while over here I get damage, hold on a second, no, damage 28, sorry. And here, with the G41, I get damage 30. So, with technically, I would prefer to have the G41. So, if I'd find another G41, I'd immediately get rid of this and give him the G41 because the range is maybe it's just one meter one meter is not such a big deal I don't mind sacrificing one meter for more damage I prefer more more damage now if we'd get another gun for example this one the M14 I was lucky enough and I got this drop in the beginning 
but I don't have ammo for it yet, so I'm just dragging it around until I get the ammo. Obviously, the M14 is superior to everything I have. I'd prefer to use it, but I don't have the ammo. The range is 50, damage is 33. So I would again, over the G41, I would use the M14. I'll use the M14 over the G41. So I hope you get a general idea. You know, sometimes it's better to pick a gun with higher range, even if he uses a smaller cal caliber. Because the chance of hitting him and disrupting his charge will pay off more. If I have, uh, for example, stirred with a higher range gun, you know, for example, let's say the range of this would be, I don't know, 80 and damage would be, let's say, 28. You know, it's still, for me, it's still fine. You know. Uh, and then I'd have my other, my other mercenaries, for example, with the standard rifles as you have here. You know, s shorter range but higher damage. You know, prioritize, obviously, the range over the damage. You know, and then later on you can maybe put a mix of both. You know, later on you can maybe have just one mercenary with a, a higher range rifle or a high range sniper. You know, snipers now with this new patch, they sort of are very uh, not very uh, useful in a way that the fact is that it takes so long to shoot. So I don't really like to use snipers in this patch. I prefer to stick with rifles. So what I do in regards to rifles, I'd always pick the highest range. For example, if I suddenly then get, uh, as you can see on this one, the damage is 33. So obviously the damage is substantially more than this and the range is, is, is also a hell of a lot more than this. So, but if I'd get, for example, another rifle that has damage or range 60, but damage 28, I'd obviously still equip that, I'd still equip that rifle. And then I'd put the rest of the rifles, if they were all the M14s, I'd put the rest of the M14s to the other people. And I just have one of those rifles that has a longer range, but lower damage. You know, because again, that gives me a chance that I'll stop his charge, even if I won't kill him, because it has probably a smaller caliber. But I'll still stop his charge or stop him from aiming and firing at me. So that's a great advantage. So this is in regards to how you should pick your gun. You know, pick your gun in regards to the range. And then pick it in regards to the damage. Obviously in closer range or in-house uh, fighting, you don't really need the range that much. You know, because in-house fighting you're, you're stuck with shotguns and knives. You know, the machetes and, and, and axes and stuff. So... You can use either the, the shotguns in in-house fighting, or uh, you can use different things such as the Tech 9 in in-house fighting. You know, I prefer to use shotguns. Shotguns is, uh, I believe, to be superior in this game. For in-house fighting, you need a shotgun, and if that doesn't help you out, always uh, a nice fire axe or a scimitar does the trick. Later on, a scimitar does, I think, more damage than the fire axe, so we should be sw switching the fire axe with the scimitar. Also, one last thing is if you want to split the actual ammo stacks is you hold the shift down and then you left click it. And here you get the split item stack and you can say how much you want to split the stack by. So for example, in this case I have 150, hold on, let's make some space. You know, and I would want two stacks of 75s or automatically it takes it by half. So here I go and now I have two stacks of 75. Now, in regards on how to gain as much XP as possible, well, first thing what I would advise you to do is to crowbar and pick lock all doors, even the ones that are not needed. If you get a merc that has excellent strength, then get plenty of crowbars. Order in a few as well, as later on in the game they become rare. In case you have a merc that is not as strong in strength, but has high dexterity and mechanical, meaning he is much better at pick locking doors, then pick lock everything you can find, even the stuff you don't need. Crowbar and pick lock doors gives you experience and as long as you crowbar or pick lock the door you get the experience so for example if you're trying to walk into a room and you realize the exit door of the room is locked well then just crowbar and pick lock it even though it's not really necessary and there's nothing hidden behind it just do it like that you gain the experience of course also repairing items as well gives you the experience so repair all the items you find even the ones that you don't need of course, in the beginning, don't waste your toolkit on items you don't use at all, meaning selling or equipping your mercenaries or town militants. But try to repair everything, as the more you repair items, the more experience you gain. After which, you can either sell the item or equip your militants, or just leave it lying on the ground. The experience you have already farmed off the item, so it doesn't really matter. Also, a good tip in regards to when you're targeting an enemy, try to group all your mercenaries and target that particular enemy. 
as long as your mercenaries have managed to hit the enemy at least once. When the final kill is achieved, the experience then goes to all mercenaries. Like this, killing one militant will give experience to three or four mercenaries instead of just one. Also, there's no point in leveling up intelligence to gain more experience, as the level cap is 10, and you will surely reach level 10 halfway through the game. Of course, the last yes. tip or hint that I could give you on gaining XP isn't really Roger. the nicest I'm way waiting. of getting the experience, Roger that. but uh, it does work. So let me give you an example of how to get it done. You can either shoot the in-game uh, players and reheal them, or you can shoot your own mercs. So Got it. let's place ourselves coincidentally in the correct spot. What next? And place her in the correct spot as well. I think here. I hear you. Okay. Hold Better be second. worth the effort. You sure love giving orders, don't you? Okay. Hold on. Excellent. Now we'll pause it. Put uh, manual uh, burst fire. Nope. Then we do that, and then we do that. Better be worth the effort. Yeah. Yes. And then for MD we do that. Manual fire, and then we shoot. There. Understood. This should work. The most horrible thing I've ever seen. Well, we didn't get the other one, but we got this one. Now all you do is you Understood. heal the actual militant. Huh? I hear ya. I can close the door. You sure Looking love for something orders, to do, don't you? Yeah. And uh I hear ya. Understood. Gotcha. Do it again. Copy that. And you heal him up again. Looking for something to and do. And you get experience again. Roger that. Now, of course, uh, the problem with this is that you end up using your item. But if you have a lot of items and you don't know what to do with them, you can do this and you gain more experience. Of course, the Understood. other thing is what you could do is what you next? could remove all your armor from your mercenary so you don't damage your armor. And then you could shoot your own mercenary and then heal your own mercenary up. So it really depends on you. This isn't really a very ethical way of leveling up or getting experience, be worth the but effort. you know, again, it is there in case you'd like to use it. Got it. And now the final thing in regards in how to make money or actually get the most money in the game itself. Yeah. Well, the thing is, you should sell everything you can get your hands on, obviously to a reasonable point. For example, this is my drop in this level. Now. What I would do is obviously I'd sell all the guns, repair all the guns to the maximum, make sure the durability is completely maxed out. It means here the durability is 1.2 from 40, I'd make sure the durability is complete, like here 35 from 35. Uh, if the durability isn't the highest, you don't get as much money from it. So repair everything you have and sell everything. So obviously I'd sell the guns, they'd make me the most profit. I'd sell even the axes, sell everything, sell everything. Obviously if you sell like, I don't know, some items like for example the key will get you no money, the bar will get you like two dollars that's a waste of cash but like you can sell stuff consumables again you don't really get a lot of money uh, medical supplies give you a lot of money if you group them up you have a group of five medical supplies let's take Ready a look at uh, hold on. who has uh, the medical supplies now i think meltdown so fine fine if I'm moving. you should be able to sell everything that you get your hands on. Got it. The medical supplies should give you around $500. Uh, the silencers give you again $480, $500. Teddy bears give you around, I don't know, $60, $50. That's still a good amount of money. You know, ammunition clips, if you fill up a whole batch of ammo, a whole slot of ammo, 150 You know, the cheaper ones, maybe it'll give got you 100 it. bucks. The more expensive ones give you 300 you know. You know, you might say, oh, come on, you know, it's nothing. But hey, you have five of those, you have already like 1500 bucks. see? $200 just for one. So, for example, I have 200 It means I have 400 just from these. You know what I mean? These are the, the cheap ones that you probably presume they're, they're valueless. I have six, $66 just from one set. How many can I make? You know, this is the thing, you know. I can make a, a pretty decent amount, you know. You have to count that uh, the majority of things, the smaller items, they may seem a lot and you might underestimate the actual value when you sell them. But like for example here I already have 4 times 66, you know, 3 times 66 actually, hold on, I could get it maybe here. 4 times 60, let's say 60 bucks, you know. So that's sort of decent, you know, you have like $240 just from this, you know, so, so that's not bad at all. 
You know, you can sell calibers. As you can see, it shows you the price. 130, 130. That's when I gain 260 more ammo. It means just by selling the ammo here, I'm going to make, I don't know, like a thousand bucks just by the ammo. You know, and then you have, let's say, a video game thing. Obviously, which is one dollar you don't bother selling. The meat you keep, you consume those you keep. You know, the iDevice, you can sell it to the iPhone, you sell it, you know. 233 bucks you sell everything you get your hands on you always get a lot of money now the key thing is how to sell for example in this case I have fine, uh, fine, one merchant here who has cash 17 he has no money but he has a gun uh, in my let's play 9 when I'm gonna be playing it I still haven't finished it since I'm doing the tutorials is what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna buy the gun off him Better Watch be worth this. The effort. I'm gonna buy the gun off him since I have the cash Okay, because I need the gun. It's better than the ones I have. But now he has 5,917 cash. So what I'm going to do now is when I'm going to sell my stuff, I'm going to sell my stuff to him. So I get my cash back. I want to harvest the cash this trader has. I don't want to keep the cash he has, especially since he's not my main trader. I want to harvest fine, all the fine, money he has. I'm I don't want to keep any money with him. You know, this is the most fine, efficient way fine, of using it. I'm Once I unlock the second trader here, I can check her out and maybe harvest her money. Now... To give a better example, if I travel down to Cambria, see you guys in a second, I'll be in Cambria at the trader. So before I go, I just wanted to, to uh, like show you exactly what I do. It means I'll sell this, sell this, sell this, sell this. She still has a thousand. I can't sell this anymore. I'll give her a knife, maybe a gun, you know, sell the axe, sell, what else can we sell? Sell the machete, you know, we can sell, what else can we sell? We don't want to sell any of that stuff, that stuff is good. We can sell the rum. The rum anyways reduces your stamina, so you're not going to use it, so sell it. You know, why not? Make 20 bucks off it. You know, you can sell the game, you can sell the walkie-talkie, the batteries, you can sell the medical supplies, and 20, okay, will really drain her completely out. Toilet paper, just to drain the last few things. You know, some stupid documents. She has a dollar left, anything for a dollar. Hold on, I saw this. Open letter. There you go. Now the trader has no cash left, you know, which is exactly what I need because then I received all the cash back that I put in and I can use my item. You know, this is better be worth the effort. This is fine, a good thing fine, to do so you don't so you don't end up losing the cash that you put into the mercenary. Is you need you need to keep all the cash as much as possible. You know, you don't want to give it out, so you don't have fine, to spread it out. Fine, you want to centralize it. For example, you drain the mercenary, you drain, sorry, the trader, when you know you're not going back to him. Uh, let me give you an example here, again. I paused it. When I start, I start in the airport. I have, I have a merchant in the airport. When I kill everybody in the airport, I sell all the stuff to the guy in the airport. Now, when I move down to Dresden, okay, again, I start selling, and I kill everybody in Dresden, I sell all the stuff to the guy in Dresden. Now, probably the guy in Dresden won't have a lot of money, so if I then jump to the roadblock and jump back and sell the stuff back, the guy in Dresden might have not might not have all the cash, so then I'll jump back to the airport and sell the remaining stuff here and then come back again. And then I'll jump to the water pump, again I'll grab all the stuff, jump back up to Dresden, sell all the stuff here. Same thing with the mine, I'll jump to the mine through the roadblock, pick up all the stuff, jump back to Dresden. You know, sell all the stuff here. If there's no more cash in the trader here, I'll jump up and sell all the stuff here. Now, in Cambria, you change your tactic a little differently, or I changed it a little differently. What happens is, you get the diamonds, which you find, I believe, I'm not sure where were they, in uh, the mine. You, you get the diamonds at the mine here, there's like four, four or five diamonds in it. They are worth $45,000. Now, and you get, I think, also a golden necklace that, uh, uh, that you can find in the water pump here, and which is worth 2000 now, the necklace itself, when I reach Cambria, I don't do the hospital university first. I usually go to the Cambria and then I do it up, then I jump up. So, what happens here... Hold on, let me just put the, the music down, it's bursting into my ears. So, what happens here is I don't sell him the diamonds, because the moment I sell him the diamonds, the merchant will not have any cash left, you know? And I don't want the merchant to have no money left. I need him to have money left because I'm going to be jumping around. I'm going to be going to the farm. I'm going to be coming back and selling him stuff here. I'm going to be going to the hospital and the university. And since I don't have access to the merchant here, you know, I'm going to be selling all my stuff in Cambria. And I'm going to be selling all my stuff from the SAM site and the hideout all in Cambria. So if I sell him the $45,000 worth of diamonds, the merchant will not have any more money to give me. And the diamonds only use up one slot. So screw it. Keep the diamonds until the last last minute until when you're actually leaving this area which I did 
so in my let's play nine so that's what you should do in regards to your traders so it means you go into an area later on let's say i go into groom city and i find that the merchant has a lot of cash in groom city so what i'll do is i'll jump around to groom city you know centralize all the selling in groom city you know just by selling items and equipping my militia you know i'll keep hold of items that are more expensive such as diamonds and once i'm done with this area and i'm moving on to another one then i'll sell him the diamonds and drain him of all the money and then i'll jump to another section see this this will sort of prevent you uh this will actually sort of help you not prevent you help you from being able to sell all your stuff you know so you won't get stuck because if i sold him the diamonds and then i have all these weapons all lying all around the place what the hell do you want me to do with them okay i can equip my uh a militia in Cambria, but I don't want to equip all the militia in Cambria, you know, rarely. I just want to maybe equip a few, you know. So this is in regards to what you do in the map. Now let's jump in to actual Cambria and take a look at the merchant there. So, here I've arrived in Cambria. I'm going to check out the merchant. As you see, the merchant has still plenty of cash. Now, I did manage to sell him the two diamonds. And the amount of cash probably increased because of the days and the time passed. And again... You see the sector inventory, I could sell him all the stuff, well, the majority of things I already sold him. I could sell him the rum, you know, I could sell him the tequila, which anyways damages my, my, my actual energy. And as you can see, all the stuff that I sold him is still here. You can see all the stuff that I sold him is still here. Again, he has $44,000. So now I know I can sell more expensive stuff like diamonds and, and, and jewelry and stuff that's more expensive to him. You know, so when I know... When I now jump into the SAM site, beside, when I now jump into the SAM station and when I now jump into the hideout and the roadblock, I know I can sell all the stuff to Cambria, you know, so it's good to keep the cash here. You know, same thing, when I move down to Alma, again, you'll centralize your sales on one merchant, don't sell him anything heavy, you know, sell only ammunitions and uh, in-game items like that, he'll sustain the amount of money and you can always withdraw the money in a way I don't know this is the way I see it you know when I leave I throw at him all the all the diamonds and heavy things I have and I just withdraw all the money that I spent on giving him see like that you'll have the cash and then you can fill up your next merchant so when you go into another area or another location you'll have the money to charge up the merchant because you can always buy stuff like armor and things and all that stuff and since you killed in that level a bunch of militants since he had no money in the beginning but since you bought the armor off him now he has the cash that you have so you give him the cash then you buy off him uh -huh. then you buy off him you, you buy off him first the armor let's say if he has no money you buy off him the armor it means you give him your cash yeah and then when you're leaving you know, after you sell all, let's say he has cash 44. Okay, he has cash, no, no. Initially he has cash zero. You buy off him the armor. Okay, let's say you buy off him four helmets or stuff. Let's say it's 3,000. Okay, so he has 16,000 in cash. Okay. Now you can sell him the weapons that you got from killing the enemies in the level. Okay. So again, you drain him down. Again, you drain him. Now he's, let's say, I don't know, 3,000. Okay, and then you know that there's a map above. And so you jump to the map up and you clean that map out and you jump back here and you sell it to him again. Okay, now let's say he's at 500. And then you realize, you know what, I'm leaving this, this sector anyways, this area, this location in general. I don't know, let's say I'm leaving this location in general. I'm not going to be coming here. So then you sell him everything you can to remove the $500 off him. You drain him up so you have the cash and you do the same thing in the next location. Well, I hope this guy's helped you out. This is it for this tutorial and happy gaming and see you again next time.